Okay, here I am again. Same place I was last week, only this time I'm going to Voyager Provincial Park, which is about halfway to Montreal, on my sort of bikepacking trip. Stay tuned. This is one of the solar farms near St. Isidore. And you might be wondering, can it produce a lot of power? Well, yeah, when you build them this big, they can. There's some others around here, and there's more down near Cornwall. Lunch time. Lunch time. Here I am in the village of St. Isidore. So this is the village of St. Isidore. Sort of the back part of it. I'm not going down the main street because I'm going off at a bit of an angle headed east toward Voyager Provincial Park. North of St. Isidore, just coming up on the ridge road here which basically runs all the way from near Kassim to Van Cleek Hill. Okay, I'm on the Ridge Road. Up that way is my, the direction I'm headed. If you look over here to the north, this is the view from the Ridge Road. And, uh, you can see that's actually the Ottawa River Valley and the hills in the background, that's in the province of Quebec. Okay, I'm just passing Van Cleek Hill and uh, I didn't feel like riding up the hill, it's a pretty steep climb. So I figured I try out the Prescott Russell Trail. I haven't been on this stretch of it for a few years. I wasn't sure what condition it would be in, but it seems to be pretty good along here, which is nice. And my original bike packing plan involved cycling along this trail end to end. Now I'm not going to be able to do that, sadly. But at least I get to see this bit of it. Okay, so I'm on the Russell Trail, Prescott Russell Trail, just past the uh, Van Clake Hill Pavilion. This area right here is where I was planning to set up my camp for the second night on my bikepacking trip. And it looks like I would have been able to find a nice spot just in there somewhere. And uh, it would have been nice and secluded. Yeah, would have worked really well. So, let me tell you what happened. Because, <laughs> why am I not actually doing the Prescott Russell Trail, you may ask? Well, it's this way. Uh, on Saturday, I guess it was, or no, Friday even, I took a test ride on the uh, gravel bike. That's the bike I'm using for bike packing. Just took a test ride on it and I probably inflated the tire too much and so just a few kilometers away from Casamine getting back home I popped a spoke. So okay uh, I'll fix the spoke. So I didn't have any spokes of the right size so I went into the city and got some spokes. They're too busy to actually replace the spoke for me, but that's okay because, you know, if I'm out bike packing, I have to be able to do this myself. So I bring the spokes back home and go to do my spoke and I've never changed a spoke on a bike with a disc brake before and it turns out to be rather more involved than I thought. So, okay, I can't just put the spoke through the way you normally would, so I guess I need to take it apart. So I did that. And then the ball bearing started rolling on the floor and I actually lost a ball bearing and I realized that I had lost my bike packing trip uh, for this long weekend. 
because there's no way the back wheel is going to get fixed either by me or the bike shop uh, in time for that. So I was pretty despondent. So what I decided to do is I drove my gear that I was going to take by bike. I drove that same that exact same gear in the actual bike bags to Voyager Provincial Park. And that's about 80 kilometers from home. And I drove back home. And now I've been on the bicycle for the last several hours. I'm about 50, 55 kilometers into my ride right now on my way to Voyager Provincial Park. And I'll get there, looks like a couple hours now, before dark anyways. I'll set up camp. I'll spend the next two days, including some rain days, biking around that area. And then on Monday, it's a long weekend, I'll pack it up, I'll put everything back underneath the tarp, where it'll be safe. I'll bike back home, probably against the wind. And uh, that'll complete my <laughs> bike packing trip, so called. So it's not a real bike packing trip, I know that. But it's the best I can do when I've got ball bearings from my bike packing bike rolling around on my garage floor. So that's the story. Now, just as punishment for the error of my ways, I was sort of hoping that I'd have the wind behind me because I'm going west to east, but no. We've had an east wind all day. Not a strong one, but certainly an east-west wind. So I've had the wind against me the whole way. And probably by the time Monday rolls around, the wind will have shifted, we'll get our usual west wind, and I'll have the wind against me on the way back. So I'll have the wind against me for the full 160 kilometers to the park and back. But you know what? That's biking. And I'm just happy to be out here on right now what is a beautiful day in a beautiful forest, just enjoying myself. So that's it for now. Well, after Van Cleek Hill, the trail got pretty rough. It's kind of hard to see on the video, but uh, where the gravel isn't sharp, it's soft. <laughs> and uh, so it's really hard to ride on with my road bike. Gravel bike would have had no problem with this, but the road bike is really struggling. Okay, I've reached the park entrance. Most of it is less swampy than this. I have maybe 10 kilometers to go to get to my campsite. Okay, I'm here. I've made it to the campsite. Uh, all my stuff is safe and secure under the tarp where I left it this morning. And let's see how far I've gone. So, 74 kilometers. So, that's pretty good. That's one of the shorter routes. So, I will point out, it was all against the wind. Anyhow, got to get some water, and I'm going to get set up now and settle in. Okay, then. It's getting on in the evening. Here's my tent all set up. Air mattress wouldn't inflate, so that's going to be fun. Otherwise, things seem good. I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning. So I'm all set up, sort of. And here I am at my campsite, still having yet to master the art of turning the camera around and pulling up the little screen so I can see myself. But there we go. So it was a good night. 
the air mattress did not work, sadly. <laughs> but what can you do? Um, but otherwise, everything was good. Even the mosquitoes held off for a bit. Well, insect repellent helped with that. So now I've got my coffee. I'm listening to the birds, and maybe a bit of traffic in the background, and I'm enjoying the morning. I'm just heading out of the park, and I'm headed toward Rigaud, which is 20, 30 kilometers east of here, give or take. I'm gonna see if I can't find a, a new air mattress, maybe have some lunch, just sort of tootle around the region. Just making my way uh, along the road to Rigaud from the park, going down south. And I found this church here that I thought I'd share. It's St. David. And uh, what I like about it is it's got this really nice garden here too. Have a look. Here's the garden. Take a quick walk around. It's early spring, so you know it's not in full bloom, but it's pretty nice. It's in the middle of the country here, surrounded by pastures and forests. And it's the road straight south from Voyager Provincial Park. So if you're out this way, stop by. Maybe have a spot of tea. This is why I love cycling rather than driving. Never would have seen this otherwise. So yesterday while driving to the campsite, I came through St. Eugene here and uh, went right through that 50 kilometer an hour sign. And uh, there's another one up by the village, but that's also where the police car was. Now he let me off with a warning because I was just doing 81 in the 50 uh, but I've never been down this road before totally missed the shop sign, or the speed sign so I'm out here a little out of my way but I wanted to check for myself why did I miss that speed sign now right by that warning for a 50 kilometer speed zone is this lovely house and it comes complete with a saloon how about that? Gotta love it. And there's the 50 kilometer an hour sign itself. So, I guess I don't really have any excuses, do I? Lunchtime in St. Eugene. Welcome to St. Eugene.
I call these ladderarians because of the ladder. Okay, I call these ladderarians because of the ladder. It's a very characteristic cross with the uh, decorations on it. We see the tongs maybe indicating that it was a dentist. We see some feathers and the ubiquitous ladder. Can you imagine farming here, maybe in the mid to late 1800s? This is just a dirt track. And across the road, you have Rigo Mountain. I had a coffee here at the Timmy's and now I'm on my way to get an air mattress. So here in theory is where the Prescott Russell Trail begins here in uh, uh, Rigaud. But as you can see <laughs> it's not suitable for most bicycles. Now, if you have a good gravel bike it'd probably be passable. I was planning to try to use it. And according to that sign back there, it's like this all the way up to Rigo, or not Rigo, all the way up to uh, St. Eugene, which is where I had lunch, remember. Uh, actually, the trail between St. Regine and uh, Ankley Hill is pretty rough as well. 
But here, this is just, obviously, it's just a rail trail here. And beyond, it's a gravel ATV trail. Could be used with a good rav gravel bike, but, uh, well, it's been wrecked. Anyhow, meanwhile, I have, in fact, sourced a, uh, air mattress. It was the only one they had at the home hardware here in Rigold. And as you can see, I'm experimenting with long distance cartage of heavy airbags. This probably won't be useful for the ride. The big ride, but it might be useful for tonight. We'll see. Okay, what we have here is a large thunderstorm. I was hoping to make it back to the uh, campsite before now. It doesn't look like I'm gonna. I'll see if I can take shelter here. There's a camping place here and they might let me shelter in their office. Okay, this is one serious thunderstorm. I'm gonna take shelter. Let me take shelter in some in a uncompleted arcade. The wind is just blowing things sideways now. That's where the campsite is. Down there. Underneath whatever that is. Well, after the rain, the wind dropped down to pretty much nothing and as you can hear I've been cycling alongside the highway but now I'm back at the park and things look beautiful didn't get wet at all how about that <laughs> of course uh, I'm not back at the campsite yet okay I'm back and in my tent uh, got back to the campsite okay but uh, there must have been a power outage or something because there's all the showers were closed and there's no water so I'm roughing it but that's okay I'm actually prepared to rough it because I have my water purifier and I've got food that I don't need water for and have 300 milliliters of water from this morning so I should be fine looks like the motorcycle crew is here so I'm gonna uh, finish off for today see you tomorrow Good morning. Here I am back at the camp. Water's back. Yay. Rained a little overnight, but not too badly, and I slept like a log. So, bonus. Okay, back out on the road. Headed east today for Hawkesbury. And this is a really popular road for cyclists. That was a duck flying away. So I'm going to run parallel to the Ottawa River toward Hawkesbury. Tool around Hawkesbury. But it's about 20 kilometers away, so it's not that far. And uh, make my way back. So I'm against the wind on the way there. With the wind on the way back. In theory, you never know things changed. Yesterday things changed with that storm. I was with the wind on the way there, against the wind on the way back, except we had a storm. And after the storm the wind died down to zero. So, bonus. So this would be the opposite of that. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. This is Chute Blondeau, part of the way to uh, Hawkesbury, as you can see here. Pretty quiet, ordinary town here in eastern Ontario with some eastern Ontario classic buildings.
all those cars lining up for? This is Hawkesbury of all places. Okay, I pulled in for some lunch here. It took a lot longer than I had hoped, but uh, I guess most of Hawkesbury doesn't have any power. <laughs> and that storm really just tore a strip through it yesterday. Hasn't started raining yet, but I'm just feeling some raindrops. So, probably won't be long before I put on the, <coughs> put on the uh, poncho. It's also gotten about 10 degrees colder than it was on the ride out, so could be tough. So I have my poncho on and I'm just driving through Hawkesbury and look at this. Just some wild turkeys enjoying the day. Not sure exactly what it is. Could be an alpaca. Don't think it's a llama. Anyhow, I'm just cycling down this straight road. There's not a whole lot to see. Got my poncho on. It's been raining off and on, so keeping my eyes open for stray alpacas and uh, doing my best to get back to the campsite. You underestimate the storm from yesterday, but uh, this is the sort of thing that's happened, and there's branches and stuff down all over the place. The motor you hear in the background is a generator, and there's a bunch of trucks outside the house indicating they're the only ones nearby with the generator. That's what it is right now, so it's pretty well. Okay, back at the campsite. There it is. You can see it there. It was rained on most of the way back from Hawkesbury, but I'm here now, and all is good. Oh, man. That was a cold night last night. I got the coffee on now this morning, and beautiful woods out rains all gone might rain later today but boy <laughs> it was rough last night I'll tell you got the coffee on this morning the rain has stopped beautiful sky out there so things are looking pretty good had a really rough night last night though it must have got down to five degrees or so and uh, my sleeping bag is rated to four but I think that rating is a survival number, not a comfort number. You have to check these. Anyhow, very cold last night. Looking forward to the coffee to warm me up this morning. Whoa. Hey, time to say goodbye to the campsite for the last time. It's been nice, but time to get on the road and head home. 70, 80 kilometers, give or take. I wouldn't have thought there was a dental hygiene wellness center out here, but I would have been wrong. They're closed right now, 
but uh, they did sell me a bottle of fruit juice. Not sure what it is, but it's got a lot of vitamin C in it. Camarice. Don't know. Sure, it's going to be good. So I'm just going to hang out here for a bit and drink my fruit juice. I like visiting Van Cleek Hill because it's unique around here, but man, I do not like that hill. And the only way to get to Van Cleek Hill is to climb the hill. Part way up the hill and therefore very deserving of a break, <laughs> I found the Van Cleek Hill tulip fields. Ah, it's a lot of tulips. Again, more signs of the debris that's all over the place around here. This is Van Cleek Hill looking uh, down the hill at last. And it's unique. It's completely different from other towns around here. I think probably because it's the only one that didn't burn down multiple times. This is the tiny hamlet of McCrimmon, population, I don't know, 10? <laughs> Anyhow, I just got a phone call from the uh, staff at the park, so I guess they weren't happy with my plan to leave my gear back home and come back and pick it up, but not much I can do about that now. Hope it's there when I get there. We'll see. Anyhow, that's the road I'm about to go down. Uh, it's called Sky Road, and you can sort of see a tower in the distance. That's the actual location of Sky. There's nothing there except a tower. This is the other end of Sky Road. I've been cycling on it for about half an hour now, or the length of one Terry O'Reilly episode of On the Media. It's kind of hard to tell in this camera, but this is a really steep grade right here. I'll probably have to push the bike up. It's part of maybe a one kilometer stretch that's gravel. The rest of it's paved. It runs parallel to the 417. You can probably hear the traffic. Anyhow, except for this one little bit, it's a great road. Definitely recommended. Sorry about the heavy breathing. I'm in going pretty fast. Okay, top of the hill, looking back. And that's the road I came on. Breathing heavy still. <laughs> Okay, I've come out the other end of the road. Here, at this side, it's called Mainville Road. And it's right at the entrance to St. Isidore. And we saw St. Isidore on the way out. Now it's on the way back, and you know what that means. Long, flat roads and empty farmland. But it's the home stretch. This is one of the pop silos. They're all over the place here. And this is the last road heading into Castleman. This is right where it begins and this road goes for a long way. All the way through Castleman, Embram, Russell, Metcalf, Osgood, beyond, all the way. I think you can get pretty much all the way to, uh, to Perth on it. So it's a very long road. It's also the road that used to cross in front of my house when I was a kid, so I know it really well. Uh, and uh, this is the last little bit for this ride and after this just a little bit as I'm coming home and that'll be it for the video.
I'm home. I'm home. I did. It's kind of hard to read, isn't it? It's <laughs> better. Seventy five point oh seven kilometers on the way back, so maybe about two hundred and forty over the four days. That's pretty good for me, anyways. So that's it. That's the video. Hope you enjoyed it.